Raven. The one-off side project from Sigurd Sater Wongraven and his album Fjaltronen was released back in June of 1995 on Sater's own Moonfog Productions record label. Fjaltronen, of course, is a Norwegian word, and it means something like mountain throne. Satir, as you may or may not know, is the lead guitarist, bassist, vocalist, lyricist, and occasional keyboard player for black metal legends Satyricon. Satir, by most accounts, is one of the most controversial figures in the ever dulling and once great Norwegian black metal scene. Controversial, you say? Well, not because he was particularly naughty like a lot of his comrades. No, this is because he helped write three of the greatest black metal records ever, namely Dark Medieval Times, The Shadow Throne, and Nemesis Divina. So what's wrong with that, you ask? Well, after that, he thought to expand the genre into other territories, to what I can only describe as worlds of boredom, stupidity, and just plain blandness. But it worked out for him, you see, because nowadays, Satyricon is pretty much a pop version of black metal, while Satyr himself is, if I'm not mistaken, a model for Calvin Klein. Now before I get to the actual music on this album, it's worth noting that Wongraven, alongside Burzum, were among the first Norwegian music makers to use Theodore Kittelsen paintings as their cover images, back covers, CDR work, and inlays on their albums. Theodore Kittelsen, in case you don't know, was a Norwegian painter who did illustrations of nature, fairy tales, legends, and of course, trolls. Curiously, that exact same year, a Norwegian black metal band by the name of Carpathian Forest used the exact same Theodore Kittelsen cover artwork for their debut EP, which was called Through Chasm Caves and Titan Woods, which came out via avant Card Music. Presumably, Wongraven's album came out first, as the release date of the Carpathian Forest EP seems to be unknown. Either way, by the time that second album came out with the same cover artwork, someone was going, Wongraven is typically seen as the solo project of Satyr, with percussion help from Hans K.K. Sorensen, who was, or still is, a member of the Norwegian National Symphony. The lineup is rounded out with no other than Isan from Emperor, who handles the grand piano and synthesizers. Now I have to say something here. Satyr over the years has been cited as this amazing synth player, but if you actually go back to those first three Satyricon albums and look in the booklet, you'll find that he did in fact have very little to do with the synth. And there was actually three session synth players on all of those classic albums. And the intro you hear on Dark Medieval Times is actually composed by a Norwegian project called Wen. Now the reason why I'm saying this is because in the booklet it says quite clearly that Satyr only played additional synthesizers, whereas Isan undoubtedly played the grand piano, and main synthesizers. So it leaves you wondering, uh, how much of this heavily synth-based record did Satir actually play on? Mr. Wongraven did, however, handle all of the vocals on this album, the acoustic guitars, the bass, the FX, and additional synthesizers. Now, allegedly the compositions of Wongraven date back to 1992, but, it's always worth pointing out that black metal musicians have a serious thing about embellishing the truth and the origins of their projects. Now, if you've been a black metal fan as long as I have, you've probably read some black metal bios over the time. And the vast majority of them are very pretentious, and uh, maybe I'm just overthinking it, but I think a lot of them are just full of shit. I mean, I've seen bios that are, like, like, like I guess they go kind of something like this. Goatfucker was formed back in 1992, when Hieronymus was king, and true Norwegian black metal thrived. We released a demo in 1993, when the king had fallen from his throne. We split up, and now 17 years later, we are back to cash in and wreak havoc upon the Christian world once again. We are goat fucker. Or something like that. But, uh, yeah, you've read them, you probably know them, and, uh, I, I guess that's just, you know, this is a black metal side project, and that all kind of just came to mind after I read that. Alright, this review is getting weird. So what about the actual music? Well, Wongraven can probably be described as 
dark medieval atmospheric synthy folk music with subtle, and I mean very subtle, dark ambient traits. The music actually bears a lot of similarities to a certain other Norwegian music maker named Mortis, who was doing something remarkably similar at the time. And whether or not this was meant to one-up Mortis is hard to say, but based on the actual compositions and the extra instruments involved, it kinda does. Now the reason why I say that is because in all fairness, this record is a bit more elaborate than the two Mortis albums that were out at the time. I mean, you got nice acoustic guitars, bass, you have this operatic second in Norwegian, and you have this very bombastic percussion. And uh, while, you know, the atmosphere of Mortis was definitely very comparable, it just didn't have those extra little details. The atmosphere of Fjeltronen transports my mind to, well, I can only describe it as like just being in nature, especially in Norway and in the mountains. And of course, I've never had the pleasure, but I'd sure love to someday, because just based on the pictures I've seen, it just seems breathtaking. And when you see these pictures and videos, and I'm sure if someday I actually see it with my own eyes, I'll understand why nature was such a prevalent theme in black metal in the early days. Music like this, I think, often requires a great deal of an imagination. And if you don't have it, you might not be able to appreciate the music the same. So when I listen to this album, I can picture myself in that log cabin up in those Norwegian mountains. When I look out my window, all I see is mountains everywhere. Trees, animals, life as it should be. And when I look up the sky, I see snow subtly falling, and behind me, a fire roars and the logs crack, and it's just a perfect sense of just peace and harmony and just, you know, undisturbed wonderfulness. Yes, this is ideal music to listen to when you really want to escape this world, especially if you should happen to have a raging blizzard outside your window or just icy conditions in general. It's really great for that. And it probably make it sound a lot more tranquil than it is. It actually has a rather boombastic and folky nature to the album, but it all just kind of becomes a soothing experience. I should also mention that the tolling bell you hear at the end of this album was sampled from Dark Throne's 1993 song, Crossing the Triangle of Flames, which appeared on their album, Under a Funeral Moon. Then, here is Kerr, who is here, all. had to categorize this album, I would probably have to call it Dungeon Synth more than anything. I mean, the medieval vibes are very obvious here, the folky tones are there too, and uh, the dark ambient is there, but it's very subtle. This album, along with the Mortis albums from the 90s and the Burzum albums that came in the late 90s when Vargo was in prison, have often been mislabeled dark ambient music, and uh, of course, nowadays we all know that this stuff is really more dungeon synth than anything now that we have a proper category to throw it into. But I think it's sort of hindered the name of Dark Ambient, really just kind of confused a lot of people as to what Dark Ambient really was. And yes, you know, all these albums do have subtle Dark Ambient uh, tones to them, but to call any of these albums really, you know, Dark Ambient is a bit of a stretch of the imagination. I should also point out that this album is just a little over 30 minutes in length, and Man, if he had just wrote another 20, 25 minutes of music, this album would have truly been a masterpiece. And the reason why I don't say it is a masterpiece is because it feels more like an EP, and it feels unfinished. It feels like there was more he wanted to do with this project. But my guess is just the rising popularity of Satyricon took priority, and of course, right after this album, he wrote the godly masterpiece, Nemesis Divina. And who can argue the greatness of that album? After the Yaltronin was completed, Longraven was more or less dead and buried as Satyr went back to composing black metal songs with Satyricon. At the time, it was safe to say that this was the last anyone would ever hear from Longraven. Or is it? It's a wine now? Longraven is a fucking wine? Uh. 
When the hell did Satir start venting wine? Grapes grow in Norway? You can fucking make wine in Norway? That's it, I'm fucking pissed off now. I am fucking pissed. God damn it. Well, it ain't a long raven wine, but I bet it's pretty fucking good anyway. Yeah. Where the hell do you even buy Wongrave and wine from? God damn it! The true musical end of Wongrave actually came in 2000 when a compilation track called Walking Away from the End of the World surfaced, and here Wongrave was basically reborn as this dark electro sort of techno ish project, which was just weird and had these sort of like. Oh, I guess, like, kind of satiricon melodies in it, and I don't really know what to make of it, but it was, like, the project was completely reborn, something totally different, and, uh, well, it's been 20 years since that song came out, so it's safe to say Juan Graven, the musical act, is, in fact, dead as fuck. In the grand scheme of things, it kind of sucks that Juan Graven didn't carry on. It would have been really cool to see how this project would have evolved. But when you stop and consider that both Emperor and Satyricon are becoming huge in the black metal scene, it makes sense why they didn't have time for this project. Of course, if you want to hear more dungeon synth in this style, there's plenty of albums to choose from. I'm no expert, but hit Facebook, go to the dungeon synth albums, and ask the questions you need to ask to find something similar, because I know there's something very comparable out there. <laughs> so now look at the album artwork, shall we? So there's the front cover, which has, I guess, like a castle or a gigantic log cabin up in the mountains of Norway. And of course, that is the Theodore Kittleson painting, as mentioned before. And on the inside, we have this CD here, which is uh, some sort of uh, sort of Celtic-looking... Uh, uh, I don't know what it is exactly. Maybe it's more just black metal-looking than anything. <laughs> I don't know. But there it is. And then on the inside of the booklet, we have another Theodore Kildersen painting. And on the inside, we have the words, This is the Forgotten Realm. And on the other side there, we have this sort of uh, shadowy cloaked figure, which curiously is also featured on Satyricon's The Shadow Throne album. So again, you know, it kind of makes you wonder if there's like some connected themes there or whatever between the two albums. I don't know, really interesting. And then on the back covers were actually all the uh, recording information and such as song titles. There's a quote on the back of the album. It describes the music as, The journey should proceed on high volume. No soundtrack music, no technical show-off. Only dim landscapes and pure northern medieval atmosphere music. And, uh, you know, that, that, that pretty much sums up the record pretty well. That's, you know what this album is all about. It's just pure atmosphere music, you know, it's it's simple melodies and it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, it's atmospheric and, you know, if you like that kind of thing, if you're into dungeon synth music like this, well, you're gonna love this record. And the version I have is the 2002 Reef Press on Moonfog Productions, and I don't think there's a great deal of difference between uh, the original and this one, except I don't think the original has the logo and the album title on the front cover. I believe also the original CD was like green or something like that with the same uh, artwork on it. So not a huge amount of difference. And it's not like this has is this is this is like remastered has bonus tracks or anything on it. This is you know the original album and everything that the original contained. And uh, you know like I said before, if you are into dungeons that synth, this is an album well worth checking out. If you're expecting to find like dark ambient music here, you're not going to find a whole lot. But uh, you know still a great record and you know definitely worth checking out. If you have heard this album or tasted that longer even wine, I'd be very curious to hear your opinion. So give me a comment down below and let's talk about it, shall we? Until next time, my name is Joe, this is a big fucking mace, and I'll see you next time on The Inner Sanctum.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to support me, consider visiting my Bandcamp site where I have CDs, tapes, and even a subscription service available. Thanks once again for supporting Dark Ambient Music and this channel.